So um, Professor Dominic Chan is currently um, at the CEHK at the Center of Decision Making. And um, so Dr. Dominic Chan, as you were hear about from his talk is doing a lot of various things and one of such is he founded this as, um, a consulting a management consulting firm and also um, invest, um, an investment company that um, and um, so he, he previously also worked in uh, consulting like um, McKinsey company and uh, before that he was doing his DPhil at the University of Cambridge I believe it was in s information signal processing uh, but as in the field of engineering so um Professor Dominic, please. Right. OK, so uh, good afternoon, everyone. So can I, I, I apologize if someone has asked you already. Can I just see who are actually already doing a PhD? OK, a, a few. So, so who are actually uh, thinking about doing a PhD? Oh, OK, so most of you are thinking about Who has a PhD already? <laughs> OK. So for those who are thinking about doing a PhD, so, so this is the question, right? To pee or not to pee? That's the question. So OK, let me tell you a little bit. So hopefully, after this 25 minutes, I'll help some of you make up your mind. Meaning, maybe you would decide not to do it. That's OK. You know, if, you, if you decide you want to do it or not do it, it's your choice. It's bo both are good choices. OK, so a little bit of my background. Um, yes, I was in Cambridge for eight years. So I, I started with my undergraduate, and then I did my PhD, and I worked there for two years. And yes, my, my subject is technical subject. I'm, I did engineering. So it's a good contrast. We have uh, Professor Choi, who is in, in the art subject and at Oxford. Um, by the way, I'm also uh, an advisory board member for the Alumni Advisory Board in, in Cambridge from 2011 to 17. So I've been seeing a lot of statistics about Hong Kong students applying to Cambridge and so on, including some um, for PhD studies. Um, and I'm also an executive committee for the Friends of Cambridge University in Hong Kong. So if you, if you are my alumni or, or future alumni, do join our alumni group. Um, as you, did you, have, you, have you seen graduation photo from the you know, PhD graduation? You notice now this is the PhD gown. I just bought it this year. I mean, I, I, had, I had my PhD for more than 20 years, but I've never bought the PhD gown until this year. Because after joining CUHK, now I do have opportunity where I need to wear a gown. You know, you know for the graduation, and it's when you just sit on stage and, and be a dummy, you know, while you watch the student get a degree. So now it's worth actually buying one. It's only just under 200 pounds. Uh, and then, you know, some, some graduation photos from Cambridge where we have to nail in front of our college master. Uh, in this case, that, that was my college master from Trinity, and that was the vice chancellor So when I got my PhD. So, yeah, we can tell you all about the ceremony later. So, yeah, you have to nail down. And everything is conducted in Latin, which we have no idea what they talk about. Okay, uh, I, wrote, I wrote a book about Cambridge. If you are interested, it's out of print, but I still have some at home. So if you want, I can, I can, oh, by the way, it is in Chinese. I wanted to write it in Chinese rather than English. So it's about my life in Cambridge for eight years. Uh, just to sell my other book, I also, because I'm a traveler, I'm a traveler, I love traveling, and I've been to all seven continents, and I wrote, I wrote a book about traveling as a couple. So I went with my, my wife, and before we married, you know, my girlfriend. Okay, um, I know we're just short of time, so I wasn't going to do this icebreaker. I'll show you anyway. I was going to do an icebreaker and ask you, there are eight pictures here, and there are only seven continents. So which continent has two pictures? But no, we don't have time for that. I'll tell you later. Oh, you, you still want to do it? Because I was told I only have half an hour. I have a lot to tell you. But if, you want, if you're up for the challenge, which continent is being repeated Good. No, actually not quite. Actually not quite. Okay, just, just do it quickly. We do it in 30 seconds. So uh, Egypt, yeah, it's Middle East, but Africa, right? So that is Antarctica. Yeah, okay, top one. South America, because it's in Peru, Machu Picchu. Yeah, okay, this one, Sydney, Australia, Oceania, yeah. This one, Paris, Europe. That one, US, Utah, so North America. This one, the Tiger Temple in Bhutan. So that's Asia. So, and this one in Mexico. And Mexico is North America. So North America has been twice. Okay. Now Mexico is uh, technically North America. So it's in the North America Treaty. Technically. 
Okay, anyway, that wasn't what I was going to say. So, um, now, just before the handover, I was in Hong Kong. I studied in so I speak I speak good Mandarin. Uh, and then when I went to UK, I went to a boarding school, which is called Victoria College. And then I went to Cambridge. Uh, I was at Trinity. And then I also worked in a company called Cedar. And then when I come back, the flag changed. Okay, so... I was at McKinsey, I was at all these company, and uh, as, I, as, as um, uh, Alex mentioned, I, I, I founded a company called Decisive, we're still running that, still running the Dark Horse, and now I'm at CUHK. So this is me in logos, you know, representing me. Okay, so, uh, oh, I also have a website called Nicholas Bird. It started with myself, and then with my wife, and then I have a, I have a young son, so now this is the new logo. So it's about traveling, about life. So if you're interested, you can go to legolasbird.com and see all my travel photos. Okay, now, okay, now, now go to the subject. I still have 25 minutes. What is a PhD? I mean, for those who are thinking about doing it, you must know what is a PhD. In, in, in Oxford, they call it DPhil. In, in, in the rest of the world, we call it PhD. What is a PhD? Doctor of Philosophy. No, actually, <laughs> seriously, seriously, if you if you do, if you could read a PhD, you 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 do Now that's 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 the Chinese translation. It's called Pahido. But then for English, it's actually called permanent head damage. Yeah, once you once you do the PhD, that's it. Permanent head damage. It's, you know what permanent is, right? It's not it's not reversible. So you're 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 damaged. So now why a PhD? Now I don't, you probably can guess how old I am, but these are the cartoon or, you know, Japanese, uh, uh, you know, TV drama for kids that I watch. So they always have some sort of scientist. You know, they, the scientists that make this superhero, the scientists that make that robot, the scientists, you know, or future, in the future that make uh, Dora Amon or Ding Dong. I never call it Dora Amon. So I, I'm teaching my son that this is Ding Dong, this is not Dora Amon. So, and then I watch Gundam, more science, you know, more fantasy about science, and wow, mechanicals, and wow, these are really great times. And then, Marcross. Anybody have watched these? Well, Gundam or Marcross, and how come you have watched Marcross? No, you look too young to have. Okay, all the, yeah, from YouTube and things, right? So, they always have science and scientists and all these super machines. And so, when I was a kid, no, no, when I watched this, I wasn't a kid anymore. I was in my high school. So, you know, we always love to become scientists. The person who invents things, who, you know, I, I imagine myself wearing a white coat, lab coat, you know, doing something crazy. So that's why I wanted to do a PhD. I've always wanted to do a PhD. So now this is what I, what I found on, on Google. And... I, I, I found a lot of this, I, and I share with you two of them. I think it's very, very true. So this is what my friends think I was doing. This is what my parents thought I was doing, my, the society and my boss, meaning my boss, meaning the PhD supervisor. They always think we are lazy, right? So, and then uh, what I thought I was doing, but this is the reality. By the way, you know, um, uh, in, in PhD, you always have to have some sort of breakthrough, and it's very hard, and your experiment fail, and so you're very frustrated sometimes. And then I found another one also. Okay, anyway, uh, I, I, won't, I won't go through this, but more or less, people think it's very glamorous to do a PhD, and you know, or you thought that it was going to be great, and then, you know, like Superman, but in, rea when in reality, you spend a few years I mean, in, in my case, in the lab and, you know, hanging out with nerds and... So, that's the reality. And then you're going nowhere. Okay, so, now why Cambridge? I mean, in my case, I actually have never thought of going to Cambridge. I didn't have that kind of dream. When I was a kid, you know, you heard about Cambridge, ancient university, top of university in the world. But now, it's, it's not my cup of tea. It's not for me. Well, until I went to UK for boarding school, when I went to Victoria College, Jersey. So that was a tiny island, by the way. It, here, you can see Jer Jersey. England is top there, right? So I was actually closer to France than England. 
It's only one hour away from uh, Saint Malo and Brittany, uh, and then it's it's uh, like one hour flight from, from Jersey to Heathrow or Gatwick. So it was easier to go to France. Uh, by the way, any ballet uh, français? Oh, bien, très bien, très bien. <laughs> so, so Jersey, my friends are actually French speaking uh, Britain. <laughs> so it's very funny, French speaking British. No, they don't, of course they're bilingual. Uh, but anyway, so uh, what I just asked was, do you speak French? Parlez vous français. But it's very useful for those who don't speak French to learn parlez vous anglais because you're asking someone if they speak English. So remember that parlez vous anglais. Very useful when you go to France. Now, okay, and then um, a small island is only 80,000 at that time. It's nine by five miles, so tiny compared to even to Hong Kong. I was there for four years. So basically, my father sent me away, locked me up in a small island. But it turned out to be a very good investment. It turned out to be a very good place. Um, by the way, that was, that was my principal. He was a graduate from Cambridge, uh, from St. Catherine College. And so, oh, why, why I put three A's rather than, better than six C's? I did six A levels. You know, you only need three, but I did six. I, I thought, oh, why not? And then my, my, uh, my advisor at the, at the college said, you know, you should really focus on three. Get that three A's, I mean, rather than six C's. So I said, nah, I think I want to do six. So I was trying to prove him wrong. In the end, whew, fortunately, I, I didn't get six A's. I got five A's and, and, and a B. And the one in B, shamefully, it was in Chinese language. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they, test you, they test your Chinese history in English. They test, you know, you have to do translation. You know, if you're in UK and you do Chinese language, it is always related to English history and China's history, English and Chinese translation. And, and they, yeah, and, and I think they also have a translation in, like, from Man Yiman to Ba Man. So, so I got a B. Anyway, so I got quite a few ones as well. So, so fortunately, uh, Cambridge only asked for three A's and one. So I, I got in anyway, so. Um, mm. Ah, and, oh, and on top of that, I was fortunate, I got, actually got a prize from the Queen. So the Queen looks very young. She's 93 this year, I think. So that was, you know, don't, don't guess, don't guess. She was, she was very young, she was very young. I was very young then, yeah. Okay, then I went to Cambridge, yes. Uh, we, didn't, we didn't have this, by the way, and it's, uh, some years later they put this. Of course, it's Choi Ji Mo, Hing Hing Ting Zhao Liu, right? So uh, I was at Trinity, that was, that's the photo. So I would end up in Trinity College. Um, well, why I chose Trinity, it was, I have no idea about Trinity, St. John's, Downing, Magdalen, no idea. And the only thing I knew was my physics teacher came from Trinity. She was, he was a graduate from Trinity. I said, okay, that's it. So I didn't do any other research. Uh, so I was the president of the Chinese society a uh, long, long time ago, as you can see. And that's me when I was uh, at Cambridge. <laughs> no, no, we were very, very influenced by like Kok Fu Seng, Ngan Wu, right? In uh, uh, the... Yeah. So, so that, that's why I had that kind of hair. And, and this, is, this is all, all these... Um, look, uh, Hok San Wong Ji look, right? And this is the back of Trinity. Very nice place. If you've ever been there, you know, when you go punting and you sit on the grass and relax, that's... It's so one of the best places in Cambridge to uh, rest. Okay, now, so I did my undergraduate there, and then I was thinking about doing my PhD. And so I start talking to uh, the other friends who are already doing PhD, and without fail, every one of them said, you know, when I asked them, so should I do a PhD? Everyone said, do you want to do no, no, seriously, they're all, they're all very discouraging. They say, you know, have you, are, you, are you sure? Have you thought about it clearly? Why would you want to do a PhD? So now, also, I mentioned I work, I work for two years uh, before I start my PhD. Um, so I applied for a PhD scholarship. I, wa it was, I was not successful, by the way, at, at first, because um, I, I didn't quite work out what I want to do. And so it actually took me a few years. But because, because of this childhood, I always wanted to do a PhD, so I didn't give up. I really, really worked hard when I was working in the company. It was actually related to the research that I was doing later. 
And so on the third year, I applied and I got it. But I have never worked so hard for anything, not even chasing my wife. No, no, that was easy. So, so now the, the trying to get the scholarship for me was one of the things that I worked so hard. And I applied to Croucher Foundation. I think you're, a lot of you probably know. By the way, Croucher Foundation is very, very good and generous organization. Uh, it supports students from Hong Kong applying for PhD and fellowship, uh, you know, postdoc and senior fellowship for like uh, for pro professors to go on sabbatical to do something. And uh, it's for Hong Kong citizens. So, so I, I think most of you pro will qualify. If, you, if you're doing a technical subject, that's where I, my PhD funding. Um, so tonight we will have director, uh, uh, David Foster. He, he will be here with us for the dinner. So, um, yeah. <clears throat> now, ups and downs of PhD. There are lots and lots and downs. Not, not a lot of ups, actually. Well, well, to start with, you know, you must have seen this picture, right? You know, uh, the purple is what, what a primary school student knows. And then, oh, this is a circle of knowledge. So primary, purple. Green is like secondary school. University is the, this um, pink one. And then you start extending a little bit, maybe masters. And then for PhD, you're supposed to push the frontier of knowledge just a little bit. No, don't over, overkill yourself. When you're a PhD student, you're not going to break through the knowledge like by a lot. It's not possible. All they ask for is if you can push boundary of knowledge just a little bit. In, in, I, I've read the memorandum from Cambridge University. That we talk about what does it mean to be qualified to get your PhD. Is uh, any reasonable student who spend a reasonable amount of time within the three years can produce something, uh, you know, and push the frontier of knowledge or something like that. So, so any any reasonable student spending three years of time to produce a reasonable breakthrough, that's it. Not not looking for a major major breakthrough. That's probably your postdoc, or, you know, your work in the future. But. Even that is actually quite hard. Now, of course, uh, in, in some places, they expect you to finish in three years. And I have seen a lot of friends end up spending four, five, six years. It's not uncommon. It's not uncommon. I was told that actually for arts, for humanity subject, could be longer, even. I don't know. But, so three years minimum, the reality is usually more than three years. Now, I, I, I was a little bit fortunate. I finished my PhD three years and three months. But remember, I have worked in a company uh, in similar field for two years. I mean, it gave me a lot of good foundation of all the technical knowledge and tools and methodology. So maybe that helped a lot, actually. So that's what the PhD is about. Push the knowledge, push the frontier of knowledge just a little bit more. But it does mean you have to think of something completely original, something that something new. Nobody has actually done before. So you have you, indeed you push the boundary a little bit. And you probably have seen this picture, no? I don't know why in Chinese we call PhD boxy. That's totally the reverse. Because you start to you start to know a lot about very little. again. You know a lot about a very narrow Versus when you are undergraduate, you learn a lot about a lot of things. PhD, you start to drill into this one field, one narrow area, and you seem to know a lot. Don't overdo it, because overdo it, then you actually know nothing about, you know a lot about nothing. So if you overdo it, right? Yeah, if you hit the, the x-axis, you, yeah, you know a lot about nothing, which is actually also quite true. <laughs> so. Remember, PhD is actually getting narrower and narrower and narrower. I don't know why it's called boxy. I don't know. What other name should it be called? A more appropriate one, right? Not, not wide, right? Boxy. Okay, so that, that was my research. Uh, I don't know why. I don't know. Don't ask me to explain it. I, don't, I cannot explain it today. It, it has a lot of um, uh, numbers and formulas. And the topic was uh, blind signal separation. I can tell you very quickly, 
blind signal separation is when you have a lot of different signals mixed together, like in a cocktail party, someone singing, talking, uh, music playing, and you know, uh, walking around. And if you can gather these mixed signal, if you can then separate out each of the source of sound, that's blind signal separation. So not no, was it music? Was it uh, someone talking? Was it uh, you know not knowing what what the source uh, feature of the source? So that's why blind. No, know nothing about the original source. And if you can if you can separate out the mixed signal, that is blind signal separation. That was my topic. So. Uh, I, I did something. I did something nobody have done before, and um, I I ran experiment to verify my, and they confirm. So yes, I did something. I'm also glad to see someone is and now making uh, some commercial use, like uh, you know if you if you if you have Alexa, you know with uh, Amazon, you have Echo, uh, no with uh, uh, Google, right? You, if you can pre-process all the sound and only pick out your sound, isolating all the different noise and things, then it can improve the quality of uh, Siri, of uh, Google Assistant or Alexa, because now they can isolate all the noises uh, from, from your voice. So that would be a application of blind signal separation. I've seen someone using my research to do that. Oh, that okay. That's good. So I did something useful, not only breakthrough knowledge, but actually someone was able to apply it uh, in some real world. Now, <clears throat> so if you are an undergraduate or master's student, when you, you know, when you finish your degree, bachelor or master, congratulations, you just finish at one stage of your life. But you know what? There's another stage that just begins, right? If you are going to work, that is jumping from a student to become an employee or staff. Your corporate race begins. So probably you start with, like I don't know, management trainee or analyst or whatever. And probably a, a year or two later, yeah, you, you get promoted. So you become what? Senior man, assistant manager or associate. Or if you go to government EO2 or I, I don't know what they call. Yeah, and then a few more years, Whoa, keep progressing. But if you are a PhD student, <laughs> then one year, two year, three years, six years later, you are still here. You have not even joined the corporate race. You have not even started. You're still at the beginning. And if you print your name card, right? Yeah, the name card is going to be PhD candidate. You don't put what, which year, of course. I, I, when I download from internet, I just thought it's funny that I, I, I just say Cambridge PhD uh, name card and they have a Sir Isaac Newton. <laughs> he, he was at Trinity like 300 years ago, of course. I'm sure they didn't have an email uh, at that time. But think about your friends, your classmate who didn't do PhD, who then you know, went on to the corporate race, and every time when you see them in reunion, they give you a new name card, and the title just keep getting bigger. We see someone crying here, so shh, cry, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. No, it's okay, it's okay. Oh, how do you feel about that? You see these friends, you know, and then they start telling you that they got a car, they put a down payment on their house, and then you just, yeah, wow, great, 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 and then, and then they ask you for a new card. No, 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 the card is good. The, the one I gave you four years ago is still good. Well, it, it's a reality. This is what you will see. When you do a PhD, you start, you start doing this. And so, oh, things that don't, don't ever talk to PhD students, right? Let's, let's check. The, this. When will you graduate? Let's talk about something else, right? Okay. Uh, are you writing your thesis? Uh, yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> how, how is your research going? Um, yeah, did you did your paper get published? Yeah, tough. What year are you again? What year? How long have you? Been? Oh, do do you have a boyfriend or girlfriend? <sighs> no, this don't ever ask a PhD student any of these questions. But 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 it's okay. You you're going to be you're going to be on the other side. So you're going to be asked uh, by someone if you if you do your PhD. Okay.
Now, no, seriously, there are good things about this. Yes, there's a very good thing, two sides of the coin, right? Okay, a, a title is for you, is for life. No one can take away from you, yeah. I, at first, I, I felt a little bit strange when people call me Dr. Ken. It just, just doesn't feel quite right. I, I just, uh, just call me Dominic. Oh, now, now even stranger when people call me Professor Chen. I thought, no, no, just call me Dominic. By the way, uh, if you go through the UK system, it's lecturer, senior lecturer, reader, and then professor. Only when you are a real professor, you get called professor. If you are lecturer, senior lecturer, reader, we only call you doctor, so, so and so. But in Hong Kong, we start calling everybody professor. And it just feels like... The, it was pretty inflated. I, 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 so, so I'm an associate professor. So I'm actually I, I'm not a professor in, in that in that sense. Oh well, it's okay. Um, now, if you like me, if you enjoy student life, it's great. I mean, spend a few more years. Yeah, but but, but when you spend three more years, it's fun. But when you spend six more years, that's not fun. Okay, three more years, but I, I end up having three year undergraduate, two year working, and three year in Cambridge, eight years, that's great. Um, if you are passionate about your subject, what's the problem with spending more time, right? I mean, it's great to, to work on something that you are passionate about. And at the end of the day, you do feel a sense of achievement. You've done something that no one has, else has done before, even though nobody else knows about it, apart, your, apart from your supervisor and the examiner. Only three people know about your, your and, and then you put it in the library, and then it gets buried in the library, right? But still, the, you know, you're happy about, and well, well, that's the emotional reason, right? But the rational reason is, hopefully, you have developed some skills, transferable. Hopefully, these will be still useful for the rest of your life. Um, problem solving, communication, and so on. I, I'll show you what I did. I mean, you already know I went to McKinsey, right? So these are actually good skills to, be, to have. And in some cases, uh, it's actually, you know, nowadays we talk about qualification inflation. So, so you have a bachelor degree, so what? So everybody else has a bachelor degree. Oh, you have a master's degree? Whoa, it's getting also very competitive. You know, you see many people with a master's degree nowadays as well. So maybe, you know, it, as the trend continues, you, with a PhD, that would be a little bit different. Maybe it helps uh, in terms of like mm, your, your career aspect. So, uh, well, now, of course, then after that, you would have to start thinking, finding your first post-PhD job. <sighs> I, I found this on the internet. I thought, yeah. oh, mm, the first rule of the PhD job market is do not ask about the PhD job market. I like that a lot. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, I didn't invent it. I found this on the internet when I, when I prepared this talk. So, now, the problem is, if you have a PhD, now you, you are overqualified for most jobs. And guess what? You are underexperienced. So you are overqualified, but, and then you have zero experience. <sighs> Doesn't sound good, right, if you're going to find a job. And, okay, what about postdoc, right? That seems to be, like, that's the natural way of doing it, right? Because now you have PhD, then postdoc. Well, as you can tell from, uh, you, can, you can ask around, right? Usually the postdoc contract are short term, a few months, because they have funding only for a few months. Maybe you are lucky they get a, a funding for two years. You know, two years is like a big Christmas present. Wow, two year contract. But guess what? It's not in the place that you want. It's somewhere else you have to move around, so you, it's very often to see postdoc running around in different cities and different places, just because they would, they would have to follow the money, follow the funding. I, I don't know a lot about Hong Kong for that matter, but, but if you are overseas, that's very common, move around in different cities. And guess what? Not only location is uncertain, you don't even know when you get the next contract, and you're constantly looking for the next contract. So, that, that's the reality for, um, it's true for a lot of PhD students. And then, <clears throat> oh, this is, the, this is it's, it's really bad. When you go for a job interview, you run into, what? You're, you're, well, you are a PhD student, you, you have friends from undergraduate, especially like in Cambridge, you, you know everybody from Hong Kong. So, 
oh, you're going for the same job and you, this is a person who is three to four years younger than you, you know, an, an undergraduate. You are competing with the same job because you are overqualified, remember? Underexperienced. So you're going for the same job. If, if that is not embarrassing enough, guess what? The interviewer is your classmate. The interviewer is actually your classmate. Well, no, 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 no. Well, even worse, if the interviewer, not only your classmate, but was your love rival. <laughs> wow, that, no, that, 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 I haven't thought of that. That would be really embarrassing. <laughs> okay, well, no, how about, how about your ex-girlfriend? Your interviewer is your ex-girlfriend from, from university. Whoa. So, you know, it's, that's, that's, that's the reality. If you go outside academic, that's probably end up, you will, you know, into these people at your interview. Okay, so it's not all bad. I mean, come on, that's, that's not all bad. So I went to McKinsey, um, management consulting firm. Now, this is, apart from continuing in academic, which will highly, highly value your knowledge and skills and so on, that would be one natural path. Uh, going to consulting, just so happened McKinsey really treasure your experience. So they do treat PhD graduate uh, a little bit different than the undergraduate. We go through a different path. Uh, I, I won't bore you with a long story uh, how I end up doing, because I was not thinking. It's just like I wasn't thinking going to Cambridge, I wasn't thinking going to McKinsey, I end up going both. But <coughs> it's, a, it's a little bit by accident. Okay, maybe I'll do share a quickly. Uh, a senior alumni of mine, John Ziyan, he's hugely successful. Uh, he, was, he was in Cambridge, PhD and undergrad. And, uh, and then, so he came back to Cambridge for, for a vacation in Christmas. And he said, hey, do you want to go to uh, McKinsey? I thought, what is that? He was already there. And then I said, oh, no idea. So, okay, would you like to put your name down for this free lunch in Garden House Hotel, which is the best hotel in Cambridge? And for undergraduate, wow, you know, going to the best hotel in Cambridge is like, whoa, whoa, okay. Yes, sign me up. So I went there, not what, I wasn't going to be uh, in the apply. So there are three types of people going to lunch like this when, when a company comes to a hotel in the ca on the campus. Number one are those who are really serious about going to McKinsey. Number two are those who are like me, not really serious, but I respect the host, so I would I dress, dress smartly, but no tie, no jacket. Oh, but the, the ones who are serious are really you know, tie and suit and things, right? And then the third time was the free rider to f there for the free lunch. <laughs> and those who don't even respect the host, they really just whatever and then just go and eat the food. Now, then when, when it comes to sit down at lunch, right, there are three different sitting areas. Number one, uh, the, who, who want to sit right next to the partners from the McKinsey? Well, I don't mind because I'm, I'm, I'm not nervous at all. So I actually sat right next to the, the guy and I asked him what McKinsey does. <laughs> So, but then this, the second area are those who are very serious, but they are under a lot of pressure. They don't want to sit right next to the partner. They just might say it's the wrong thing. So they will sit like enough to, uh, far, uh, close enough to make a conversation, but far enough to just eat and not pretending to be, you know, don't, don't look at me and things like that. And then for those who are the free rider for the free lunch, they sit on the end of the table. No, no, this, seriously, this is how it's done. So um, I ended up applying just for fun because I thought, well, if I'm going to do a PhD, sorry, if I was going to do a postdoc, I better get some job interview experience, you know, a low risk way to get the job interview experience. And, and, and somehow I got in. <laughs> and so, because I, I guess because I was not nervous at all, I went for the interview. It was tough, it was tough, but then it doesn't matter. I wasn't, I wasn't serious about it, so it doesn't matter. And so I actually end up pretty relaxed about it and so apparently I did okay. Then I got the um, offer. Now this is, this is, my girlfriend at that time, not, not my wife, my girlfriend at that time, she really hated cooperation like this. It's the enemy of the good. Uh, I mean, okay, I would say it loud, it's an evil company, yeah. She didn't like any, she ended up doing an NGO. Um, and, and you can see, you know, we're, we're, we're way, uh, uh, half, the, half a globe apart now. But, so she really hated it when I got the offer because I was seriously thinking about it. And then I actually told my supervisor, I said I, I was going to go back to Hong Kong to be a consultant, a management consultant. And then my professor said, you joined the dark side. <laughs> you joined the 
dark side. Yeah, you know, a postdoc, academic, pure and innocent and good. You know, consultant, uh, eye banker, evil. You know, destroy the world. So, but what he didn't know was how powerful is the dark side. <laughs> if if you only knew the power of the dark side, that. That's your answer. It was six times more powerful than the light side. <laughs> based on the salary I was going to get for postdoc and based on the salary I was going to get from McKinsey before bonus. Before bonus, I was going to get... And I, I was in my lab, I was looking at the postdoc. I was looking at my professor. I, I knew my professor wasn't making that much. No, no, but, but, but remember, I, I think in, in academics, so, so I, if I see my professor now, I have turned back. I, I, I turned back. Darth Vader didn't turn completely. I turned back to the light side. See, I'm now teaching at university, right? So I didn't, I didn't turn completely. But it was, it was very tempting. And, uh, and I, I was tempted, in fact. Yeah, I, so I temporarily uh, went to the dark side. So, um, and then uh, after one year, um, so, so my then girlfriend actually also came back to Hong Kong. To after one year, I got, I got a raise. Sorry, how much time do I have? Oh, sorry, I'm already overrunning. Okay. Just finish this story. Yeah. So uh, the first year when I got my pay, my pay rise, it was more than my girlfriend's annual salary. So the pay rise was more than her annual salary. So let me just go through a few more things. One last, one last thing about... And then later on, I become a slasher. So I'm, I'm telling you, a consulting career starting point, and I end up being a slasher, which is what a lot of young, I think young generation love, love to do these, these days. Meaning, we do a lot of things. We don't do one thing. It's not a one career. It's a portfolio, a portfolio of career. I think this is the way that nowadays people like to work. So I end up being a professor of management consulting, a corporate training angel investor, and a writer. Now, I, I know we're running out of time, so my very last slide, I'm going to skip over all this. It's this one. So if you're going to do p uh, research, I, I wish you research in peace. So uh, do we have time for questions? I don't know. I, I already overrun. Because I skipped a few. You, you, you probably wonder whether I put a rabbit, but no. Um, so how much time we have for questions? OK, three, three questions. So yes, Sanya. Well, actually most, most uh, PhD research probably don't end up being commercialized. I, I don't know, the, I don't have the, the numbers, but my, my gut feel is most of them not ending up being uh, commercialized. But, but the thing is, but the PhD students who later graduate, they learn a lot through the process. They do end up, but they do end up in a lot of interesting technical company. I have a few friends who become billionaire. I, sh I should have joined them instead of uh, coming back to... Uh, actually, they, uh, they didn't tell me the, the other dark side, uh, the, tech, the tech startup was also more powerful. But anyway, so, no, but uh, I, I think not, not many of the research end up being really useful in the real world. It's a matter of time, actually. Yeah. I'm just curious, have, you having said that um, the dark side is so tempting, so what drove you back to the light side and how do you think you were, you're going to stay? What, what motivates that? Well, you, you see, I st I'm still a consultant, so I, I oh, turn... Huh? So, so, so I'm still one foot in the dark side and then one foot in the light side. Now, the f funny thing is, in, if, you, if you think about it, right, if a, if a professor who has been always been a professor suddenly go to run the business, people say, wow, this guy turned uh, good. They shouldn't be doing business. But you see a businessman, later on when they say, wow, I would, I would like to give back to the society, so I will become a professor to teach people business. Wow, that's, that's a saint, right? <laughs> it's so unfair, right? It's so unfair. So, but, but then now, so I, I went to the dark side, and then now come back, and they would say, yeah, that's great. This guy, this guy is turning back. But, but how dark do you think actually it actually is? Like, no, no, this is just, exactly. just joking. Just joking. It's, not, it's, not. it's up to you. It's up to you. Yeah. I brought light to the dark side. Oh wow, thank you, thank you. See? No, it's up to you.
to you. No, no. I mean, actually, uh, at 6.15, I, I'm going to give another talk with the joint university career talk on management consulting. <laughs> and I'm, I'm trying to encourage them to join the dark side. So it Thank must you. be a good, good side to be, to be on. Okay, so... <laughs> oh, sorry, we have two, two hands and... During the during, uh, during the PhD journey, what PhD student? The hardest question. Uh, what what do what, your entire life? That's a very deep question. <laughs> no no, the, 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 it's a good one because um uh I will, I will say, f first I will make a quote and then I will I will try to answer your question. By the way, if you make easy choices, you're gonna get a hard life. But if you make hard choices, you're going to have an easy life. So I would encourage you, if you don't avoid the hard choices, always head on, take on all the hard choices, so hard questions. Um, in a way, <clears throat> it, it, well, actually choosing whether to go back to Hong Kong to be a consultant versus staying was, was one, of, one of the tough questions. Um, and then after failing or applying for a PhD funding for the second time, I, I have to ask myself, should I stay in Cambridge or should I come back to Hong Kong? That was another hard question. Coming back to Hong Kong in 97 was a very interesting question as well. I came before the handover. So that, those are, I, I really thought long and hard, you know, whether should I come back to work for McKinsey. You know, is the, the, I came back in January. So it was six months before the handover. Was that a wise choice? Should I wait for another year? Yeah. That, uh, otherwise, <laughs> the, the other choices in life would be when should you have kids? You know, you know I, I'm not young, and then my kid is, my son is only four years old. You know, family decision, those are also tough ones, but more personal, however. Yeah. Maybe, maybe one last question and then. Um, hi, uh, so you briefly talked about having a portfolio career and your own portfolio seemed kind of like interrelated, but then again, quite different. Yes. Um, so I was wondering what sort of challenges did you face when you were quote unquote jumping different professions? Actually, I'm not jumping. In fact, I'm embracing them all at the same time. Now, um, I will tell you one, one thing that I really make a good decision was 2006 where I become a freelancer. I, from, from, running, from having a job to become an independent professional. And that was 2006. And so from then on, I was an independent professional. I basically am my own boss. So I can use my in different area to, if you can make money using any kind of your skill. So if you think about it, if you work in a company is only using one set of skills that is perfect to the company. But maybe you can sing, maybe you can play piano, maybe you can do, you know, you can do other things. Those are your hobbies. Think about if you can turn every skill that you're good at into a career, part career, why not? So a job is very limiting in that sense. And so I was glad that I made that decision to become an independent professional. There's a history about why, why I make that jump. That, that was a good decision. And, and from then on, it expanded my horizon to include, to become a lot more other things. Maybe if, if you allow me, one last concept that I will show you is this picture. Whoops, no, 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 no. Going the other way. This one. And then quickly. Think about this for your, for your life, right? Four different circles. The first one, sorry, let's go back. Uh, First one is what you love to do, something that you love to do. The other one is something that you are actually good at doing. So love to do, good at doing. And then what the world need. And finally, something that you can get paid. So think about this. If you have something that fall within all four circles, congratulations. Some people, you know, even throughout their life have never found spot where four circles overlap. I found my Ikiga, 
which is right in the middle is, for me, is education, for sure. This is why I go back to academic, because I finally realized education is what I love to do, I think I'm good at, the world needs education and I get paid. So hopefully you will find your, well, I think I'm really running out of time now. Okay, so I'll hand it back to you. Yep, thank, we thank Professor Dominic Chan again for the lively talk. <laughs>